In this video, you'll learn how to make a custom logo animation inside of Fusion. It looks like this. Ooh. Here we go. Shabam. Just some nice little movement. Camera kind of zooms out and we have this timber goods thing just kind of sliding in. Super simple. A couple really nice techniques that we can use for any logo without a ton of work. A lot better than just putting in a still. My name's Casey. I teach content creators how to be amazing at Fusion. I have a free video course, the Fusion Survival Guide. It's available in the description below. Let's animate a logo. All right, so we have a blank fusion composition. You can make this yourself. If you open up your media pool, right click and say new fusion composition and just hit create and it'll come in something like this. First thing let's grab is our logo. I'll go up to the media pool in the upper left and here I have a logo. I'll just grab this and drag it down into the flow and close our media pool. And I'll hit one on the keyboard to bring this up in the left viewer. This is just a nice way to preview part of our comp. And this logo is just a PNG that somebody else designed. So we can use this. It's just a image file with some transparency. And let's put this over a background. So we'll take this background node, drag this in and take the output of the background node and put it into media out. Anything we connect to media out is what we're actually going to see. So after we do that, we have a black screen. Yay. It's black because the background is black. So I'll select the background node and go over here to the inspector and let's make this kind of a bluish teal, something like this. Yeah, that's nice. And now we got to put our logo on top of the background and we do that with a merge node. We can either grab a merge node from our toolbar here like this, drag it in between our background one and our media out and take the output of our logo and put that into the green foreground input. And there we go. Or if we want to skip all those steps, we can just take the output, the little gray square of our media in and drag it over the little square output of our background. And that'll do all of that for us. Nice. Let's rename things. I'll select a node and hit F2 to rename it. We'll call this logo, rename our background, blue BG. There we go. We're on our way. So depending on what kind of logo you're working with, there might be some different things that you want to do to animate this. This logo gives us so many options. We could animate all of these words coming in. We could have the tree kind of grow out of the ground. We could have these axes fly in. And if you want to see all of that, let me know and I'll make another video on it. But for today, we're going to keep it just crazy simple. All we're going to do is cut this logo right here and kind of have the bottom part just reveal out of nothing. So a way that we could cut this logo would be to add a mask and we could add a mask to the logo itself like this. I can just connect a rectangle mask to the logo and then I can move this mask around and it's only going to have that logo show up under the mask, but I actually want to use different parts of this logo and I don't want to have to duplicate the logo and remask it and everything. So instead of putting the mask on the logo itself, I'm going to put a mask on the merge, which is going to give us the same kind of effect but I still have my logo untouched that I can use in a bunch of different ways. So we'll take this rectangle mask and we're gonna adjust this and I'll select just the bottom part. So we have just this little triangle here, great. And now that we have that separated, let's get the rest of the logo. And the cool thing about working with nodes is we don't have to duplicate a bunch of stuff. We can actually just take the output of a node and we can put that into something else. So I could just, again, put this over the output of this merge and that'll make another merge. And that's basically basically merging this whole logo on top of everything that we've done so far, okay? So if I were to grab this and move it around, we have this as the background, and then we have the whole logo on top of it. Make sense? So what we want to do is split this up, and we can actually probably use the same mask, and what we want to do is have this layer be the top part of the logo, and this layer be the bottom part of the logo, okay? So we could make a separate mask, or we could even reuse this mask and take the output of this rectangle and put this into our second merge. That's gonna mask both of these logos to just the bottom part. But what I can do in any node is if I select the node and go over to the inspector, over here in settings, I can check apply mask inverted. And so what that'll do, it'll limit it to the mask, but it'll flip the mask first. So I'll say apply mask inverted. And now we have the top part and the bottom part as separate pieces. All right, that's what we want, that's good actually zoom in a little bit and adjust this mask just a touch because I want this to be right in the middle of that black line. Okay, so we have our two separate pieces here, the top and the bottom. Let's go ahead and rename these. I like to put an underscore after our rename just so we know what kind of node this is. So again, top underscore MRG for merge. And now we have this split up. And what's cool is since we have this split up, we can move these separately. 
So I could take this bottom and I could do something like add a transform node, which is right here under our stop button. I can grab this and put this in between logo and the merge. And I could grab this transform and I can move this around under that mask. So if I push this up, you see what we're getting at here? If I move it down, it's kind of weird, but when you move it up, oh man, magic happens. So maybe we can just start with it like this and then have it come down and kind of click into place. It sounds good. Okay, so I think in like over about half a second or so at frame 12, I'll just select the frame that I want this to end at. So when I want it to look like this, that's the frame I want to be on. So let's go frame 12. And to animate this, I'm going to select whatever I want to animate. So this transform node right here. And I'll go over to the inspector and figure out what I actually want to change over time, which is going to be this center Y, because if I move this up and down, yeah, that's the one. And next to that, there's this little gray diamond. If I click that once, that'll add a keyframe. And what I'm doing is I'm telling Fusion at 12 frames, I want this center to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now I can move somewhere else in time, so maybe like up here to zero. And let's tell Fusion where we want this to be at zero. So I'll just kind of push this up and maybe we'll just have it start like that. So it's sort of like folded. And now in between those frames, it's gonna fill in that animation. Oh baby, let's take a look here. Yes, we're doing it, that's the way, good. So one thing I do wanna change about this animation is it comes and it just stops immediately. See, it just kind of jerks to a stop. That's not a good idea when it comes to animation. It always looks nicer if things slow down before they stop. So the way that we can kind of smooth that out is we can open up a panel called Spline. In the upper right, there's these buttons. If you click on Spline, that's gonna open up the Spline panel. And anything that you have animated over time is gonna show up here in these little check boxes. And if you check one, it'll show you the graph of the animation. You can select this second keyframe or any keyframe that you want to adjust, and you can move these handles on this graph and change the speed of the movement between the keyframes. And if we're gonna have something kind of slow down to a stop, we want this to be flat like this. You can imagine if you're driving up a hill, a nice gradual top of the hill like that. So then, oh, look at that. Just that one difference. Look how much better that looks. It just, just slooshes into place. This is what motion graphics artists call a sloosh. <laughs> yeah, when it comes in like that, it's a sloosh. Uh, that's partially true. I call it a sloosh. And so there's part of our animation that looks nice. Let's add just a little more. One thing is I feel like this background is a little boring. Let's put a texture on it. That's an easy thing to do inside of Fusion. If I open up the media pool, I have this texture here. You can use any texture you want. This is just a JPEG and I can grab this and drag it in and they'll call it media in one. We'll call this texture, close our media pool and I'll merge this texture over our blue background like that. And I'll add a transform node between the texture and the merge just to resize this a little bit, scale it up. And now we have this white background, but I can select this merge and here under apply mode, I can change this to something like multiply and that will just use the darkest pixels. So we still have that color, but we have a little texture over it. Oh, looks nice. Maybe we'll take the blend down a little bit. That's just like the opacity of the merge and just keep it tasteful, something like that. We want this logo to stick out, be the brightest, most high contrast thing. So now, oh, it looks good. So I think I'll do one more thing to give this a little bit of movement here is let's add a transform node after everything. Let's just bring this transform node down like this. And if everything runs through this transform, whatever we do to the transform is going to happen to everything, right? So maybe around six frames, let's settle to this zoom. So I'll just click this keyframe here under size, under our last transform here, move up to frame zero, and I'll push the size up a little bit like this. So now we have this kind of zoom out, very nice. Maybe we'll flatten out this movement as well. One thing you can do is select a keyframe and hit F on the keyboard to flatten out that tangent like that. And then, oh yeah, that's nice. There we go. Yeah, really simple, really easy, and totally custom. And from here, you can add all kinds of things. Why don't you comment your idea of what you would do to this logo next to give it some more interesting animation? But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. So there's a dead simple way to animate a logo inside of Fusion. If you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out the Fusion Survival Guide. It's available in the description down below. It's a free video course hosted by somebody you know. Me, it's me. It's not, I'm, I'm the host of the course. That's it, that's all I got for you today.